Show me something we've missed. Show me something we've missed. That's how you put it. Yeah. And so we did. So um, I had received, they, they had sent me down before the meeting the, the latest filings that they had made a couple of days um, before. And one of the things that they're claiming is because the, the state is mandated, mandated to expand Medicare where they're not being paid for it, is that it violates their due process. So I brought up with the Attorney General, I said, well, what about this case of the Supreme Court called Bauer versus public agencies against Social Security and traffic? He said, well, I don't know about that. I said, well, in 1950, the states were allowed to get into Social Security, and they entered via a voluntary contract that they could get out of that had termination permit. The same way they got into Medicare. They got into a voluntary contract that has termination provision. But in 1980, about 15 or 16 states said, ah, oh, this isn't a good deal. We're wanting to pull out of Social Security and create our own retirement program for our employees. So Congress said, well, hey, wait a minute. If you pull out, your money goes with you. So Congress said, we're going to change the law, terminate and repeal that termination provision. So all these states got together and they formed an organization, public organizations against Social Security and traffic, posse. And they filed suits. And it ended up at the United States Supreme Court. And here's the issue. Social Security, Congress has the authority to amend the Social Security Act at any time. So here's what the Supreme Court said. When you enter into a contract with a sovereign like the United States, that sovereign retains his sovereign authority unless he extinguishes it in explicit terms. Therefore, since the contract you entered into had an amendment provision, you agreed to the amendment provision. And even if that amendment is the repeal of your termination provisions, you've already agreed to it. And we have not violated your due process of law. And I looked at him. I said, the Attorney General, you entered into a Medicaid contract. It was voluntary and it has termination provisions. But guess what? Congress has the authority to amend that Medicaid contract at any time. And they did in Obamacare. You don't have a due process left. And he said, now you're scaring me. And I should, because I just tore it apart. Very foundation of the case. It won't survive. It's not going to survive. But it's very difficult when people still believe in the judicial system and don't recognize that that's really more corrupt than Congress. <laughs> Since the people created the government, we were sovereign over the government to start with. Right. So, how can the government claim their sovereignty? <laughs> we, we can't claim our sovereignty. We just haven't done it. <laughs> and that's what it's really coming to. It's just a matter of standing up for right. our sovereignty. That's what their position is. It's you taking back your government. The reason why our country is in the shape it's in now is because we were staying silent too long. Right. We allowed our government to become what it is. We allowed it to become a monolithic institution and we're all dependent upon it. Okay, so coming back to this whole lawsuit thing again, the only way that we can really make a difference is to do this now, not wait until after they make some decisions. Yeah. So what the Attorney General said was the, this, the case is slated to, for filings all the way through December. He didn't say he was pulled out of it, but he also didn't say he would stay in it. I'll tell you what he did say. He said, I got involved in this because Florida and Virginia both have legislation against Obamacare, and I can use that. The state of Indiana does not have legislation against Obamacare, and I have no guarantee that they will pass it. So we talked about, well, what about the 7th District? We would rather see this in the 7th District. He said, I would rather have it in the 7th District because I'd like Judge so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so to see it. But he said, I don't have the things I need. So we've got to give him the things he needs. What does he need? He needs interposition. That's what he just said. He needs legislation against Obamacare. That's what he needs. And he can move that from Florida to Indiana with a filing. Or he can decide to get out of it. Yes. 
I'm still kind of unclear on why the federal court doesn't have jurisdiction. You're, you're saying that the state's lawsuits don't address the fact that this law is going to allow the federal government to compel me as an individual to contract with an insurance company. That That's not involved in the lawsuit. It's a violation of my individual rights in the government. No, what I'm forcing me to contract for insurance. No, I'm saying that's a violation of individual rights. I'm saying you're going to have a real problem trying to prove that okay. in the court of law. It, let me explain how I think the way that I'm understanding the way you're explaining it. I can say you're violating my rights by requiring me to contract, but they can say it's not really a requirement to contract because if you do not contract, we simply tax you under Social Security, and they say Social Security, you, Mr. Individual, is a, a contractual agreement you've already entered into with the government, therefore we haven't violated your rights. Uh, okay. But it goes, it goes one step further. It's the same argument we've outlined. Once you entered into a contract with the sovereign, you accept their amendment. Okay? But it, but it goes one step farther. Because uh, it's 26 U.S.C. 6305B. It says, Review of Assessments and Collections. No court of the United States, whether established under Article I or Article III of the Constitution, shall have jurisdiction in any action, whether legal or equitable, brought to restrain or review the assessment and collection of amounts by the Secretary under Subsection A, nor shall any of such assessments and collections be subject to review by the Secretary in any proceedings. This subsection is not presumed to preclude any legal, equitable, or administrative action against the state by an individual in any state court or before any state agency determine his liability for any amount assessed against him, neglected, or recover any such amount collected from him under this section. So other words, in other words, since they're enforcing the mandate to buy health insurance with a tax under Social Security, that law says that the, 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 the courts don't have jurisdiction to receive that into evidence. They can't. They can say, okay, I can see that you're, you're being required to buy health insurance, but the coercive element, I can't, I can't rule with that because, okay, because that can't be put into evidence. And therefore, even though you're being coerced, I can't say you're being coerced. Okay, so let's say the legislature in Indiana passes the interposition resolution, yes. and we, we refuse to cooperate as a state. The state is not going to carry out any of your mandated activities to put to implement this. But the IRS is still going to come after me for the 700 bucks a year. We need also implementing legislation, okay? And that's where you have the prosecutorial power. And then you um, what? When they try to enforce? If they try to enforce that, you'll have prosecutorial authority. I personally will? How do I implement that? You know, I, I file a lien against the sheriff when he comes to collect or no. No, you go down to your prosecutor and say, here, this person is threatening to violate my rights. The jails can't hold everybody. So they can't yeah, hold everybody. I'd like to see. What's to stop us from doing that for income tax now? Well, I mean, how's it going to be any different? Is what I'm saying. Exactly, we could, but um, the people, the people seem to like paying income tax. But I mean, are we going to be in the same position that we're in now, where everybody's afraid to do it? <laughs> Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I think everybody here probably gets the general concept. So, you know, we're very action-oriented, as you might have 